All right, so that's flash forward again. That has been your word. That is my, that is. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot, because she took forever, 2018, and, <laughs> and we didn't, well, we'll get into that. But 2018 is when we met mm -hmm. through the DMs. She slid in my DMs. Um, and then 2019, you was like, Mark, I'm ready to start this process. So how I had my process at the time, and like I said, I was doing a lot of the home tours. So sometimes you would say, where is that? Or that floor plan. And there's a, one particular builder at the time that really caught your, your interest. Mm -hmm. So how I was doing it, because again, she hadn't signed a buyer brokerage agreement. Um, I said, you know, the first trip, get familiar with the area, kind of see about floor plans. So I had built up really positive relationships with a lot of the onsite agents here in greater Atlanta. So what I would do is say, introduce you to these agents. So talk a little bit about what that initial experience was when you first came down and, um, you know, certain floor plans that maybe interested you. I know you said you started off at five acres and I said, <laughs> eh, you want to be kind of close to Atlanta and stuff like that. Um, so talk a little bit about that experience, some of the communities I sent you to and what your initial feedback was. You know, I thought it was, um, uh, unbeknownst to us, it was a great plan, right? Because I, I didn't, I wasn't familiar yep. with Georgia. So this allowed me to fly in several times throughout, I want to say 2019, yep. meet the onsite agents, actually see the neighborhood, see the houses. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think I was at that point convinced that I'll, I'll b build a home within, a um, a you community. The, you need the five acres of land to I get still, started. I still want the five acres of land. <laughs> my dream is to build my mom's house next to me. Have it um, all state. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little Be home for. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, that was actually awesome. I, I was very uh, conscious and aware that I didn't want to waste your time yeah. because I didn't know what the process or my timing was. Yeah. And so that was very educational for me. But but I knew that I was going to execute at some point. Yeah. Um, so I got to see different communities. Um, and I just, the one thing that stood out is I didn't want to be so close to my neighbors. Yeah. Um, it's the first time that I'm going to live in a house. I'm, I'm used to living in, in On top of each other. Buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even my condo was a building. Yeah. Um, and so I just wanted a little elbow room space for did, my neighbors. Did you have timing around it at this point? Like, did you know, I want to be in a house or have a house built by 2020 by 2021 or were you just sort of in the infancy stages of i want a house i think i wanted to be in georgia were you just sort of exploring without a real timeline at this point or were, were you guys actually focused on she wants a house and she wants to close by a said no i think you know it wasn't getting serious i think until end of 2019 you're starting to think about putting your condo on the market mm -hmm. um so she's like mark this is really going to happen and she after you had looked at a few of the communities, I'm thinking to myself behind the scenes, behind the front door, <laughs> um, why does this girl need like a four or five bedroom house, right? But then as we started talking, she brought her mother up for one visit mm -hmm. uh, when we actually did meet in person. And so there was a connection there too. She reminded me of my grandmother because I was very close to my grandmother having grown up in Connecticut and I had lost her just a few years earlier. So seeing Kathleen and her mom and that interaction and she, she was saying, you know, eventually I want to have, uh, and then she's like, I need a basement because I want to have like an in-law suite or, you know, for her mother suite in the basement. So I was like, okay, this girl, okay, this 300s are probably not going to happen anymore. Um, but I remember because again, of those relationships, she, um, in the DM had said, Mark, I love, you know, a couple of these communities. We actually looked in Douglasville, mm -hmm. Fairburn, Chattahoochee Hills, Noonan, I think I sent you, or Random in Locust Grove as well. Um, but South Fulton area started to speak to her. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember the agent, one of the agents we were working with on one of these communities that you were interested in, she was saying, you know, it sounds like Kathleen wants a little bit more land. There's this new builder that's kind of entering the marketplace here, and they're going to have probably at least one acre lots. And to that's that, how it to that point. Yeah, and I know the agent um, that you're referring to. I yeah. just want to say, generally speaking, yeah, it's so rare in our industry to get that type of collaboration, not even just collaboration, yeah. but that type of support right. 
for another agent who, you know, we're all in the business of sales. Sales, right? right. So for another agent to say, hey, she's not really interested in the products that I have, but I think she likes what the competition has to offer. So I'm going to kind of throw her to the competition, but still look out for you as her representative to make sure that you follow this thing. That doesn't really happen a lot. So I think that thank yeah. you to that agent. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's how relationships do matter though, because <laughs> I had given this agent in particular that did give kind of the referral to both Kathleen and myself about the heads up because they were doing something different in the market, like offering separate carriage houses, these big yeah. one acre. And they, at the time they were still in like the threes and fours, mm -hmm. which was incredible, a little bit more rural area. Right. And you're not sure somebody coming from New York, New Jersey area, if that's going to be too much, but she was a she sister. Her mom she wanted it. Yeah. So right. Right. <laughs> well, I think she was fine with, with diversity. But it does point out though yep. that you know experience does matter Absolutely. and because i had given this particular agent a lot of business mm -hmm. yeah. she had allowed a lot of semi-custom features changes on houses so we worked like hand in hand on that but that company actually ended up being bought out by another company and they turned pretty much into what's called a spec community where you don't get a cho choice to move things around and make your closet bigger and stuff like that and speaking of which, and you know, I'm sure we're going to get into this. Yeah. So, Miss Kathleen, yeah. you guys find the community, you find the house, yeah. and you find the floor plan that's supposed to fit the needs and the wants until they allow her to configure the entire floor plan around. Yes. So, really making it exactly what she wants. Well, um, yeah, what I was drawn to the, the particular builder at the time, like I said, not many, especially at that price point. Once you started hitting like a half a million to a million, even a million plus, it's more semi custom, custom. Um, what I was impressed and when I met Kathleen out there um, was that they did allow flexibility. They had some great lots. Um, the lots that we looked at, there were there were trees up. You could not tell how deep the lot Zero was going to go, right? Mm -hmm. And so what was it in particular about that builder and that product and that floor plan? Because mm -hmm. it actually originally was supposed to be a five bedroom floor plan, but mm -hmm. Kathleen had to go in and a couple of rooms <laughs> made the difference to her. And if they said no, it probably wasn't going to go forward. So Tell everybody out there what stood out to you and what that process was like. Yeah, yeah. I want to step back just a, a yeah, tiny yeah, bit. Yeah. So um, I was already, I, I mean, I, I think at this point, you're, you guys know my personality. I'm extremely laser focused. Absolutely. And so I made the decision that I'm moving to Georgia. Yep. And so in 2019, at some point, I put my condo up for sale. Yep. Selling a condo is very tricky. Um, different from a from a from a home, and so I actually uh, had a buyer went on the contract, fell through in 2019, 2020, um, February of 2020. I went in the contract, go to South Africa for on a missions trip. Okay. While in South Africa, my attorney is hitting me up. Um, I'm you know the process is moving. It's actually getting closer. Uh, I think at this point I update you, Mark. Yes, like, I hey, I'm, through, yeah. I'm I'm selling. I this is it. I'm gonna sell the condo. Come back from South Africa two weeks or a week before um, COVID breaks out. So we're we're yeah. talking March of 2020. 2020. Mm -hmm. And so um, the closing was supposed to be March something of the condo. At this point, I had locked in a rental because I wanted to have the flexibility to leave whenever my home was ready. And I knew that a home at the time, Mark yeah. was educating me that it would take several months. So I looked for a rental yeah. and I was selling the condo and I was getting myself prepared to make this move, right? Um, smart, very smart to like, cause we always talk about when people are trying to build a house, like they're trying to time it and line it up, but you did a great job. You have, like, plan yeah, plan you have B, the plan, B. oh yeah. And plan B, C and D um, really comes comes to, to fruition yep. uh, later on. But listen, March, 2020, the, the condo sale falls through. Okay, so now I had sold my things. I lost deposits of mm. the, um, the rental. But did you have to sell the condo in order to qualify to buy the next house? So I didn't sell the condo. Actually, the contract fell through. Okay. Um, and it's an excellent question. At the time, I was focused on my first step is to sell the condo. The second step is to get the house in Georgia. But later on, I find out that actually I was qualified for a certain amount of money that I didn't have to sell my condo. Knowing you the way I know you, 
and you know you're laser focused you research everything when the deal from the condo falls through do you just instinctively say i need to pause the georgia search at that point because now you're thinking hmm, that didn't go according to my plan so pause the georgia plan or did you just adapt to no i still want that so i'll just figure it out um, I had no plan immediately because of COVID. So at this point, it's March 2020, right? Yep. The deal falls through, but we're all on lockdown, right? So there, there is no planning, right? Because we don't even know how long we're going to be right. in lockdown at this point. Mm -hmm. And so I'm stuck inside the condo working 100% remote like everyone else. Yep. And um, it, June of 2020, um, I become claustrophobic. Like I want to be able to like go outside. Remember, I'm in an apartment building. I'm on the sixth floor. I have to put on a mask. So it's just... like super duper confinement. <laughs> super duper yeah, confinement, well. right? And I'm, I am a, a little bit of a risk taker. Um, so I asked my job if it was okay if I worked remote from Alabama. So my 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 short term goal was to uh, spend the rest of lockdown, however long that was. Um, in Alabama with my mother in a house because she has a house. She has a patio that I can actually sit outside yeah. and get fresh right, air. Right. And so um, crazy. I'm crazy enough to say, hey, Mark, I'm flying in to Georgia June of 2020. Yes, yes. Are you comfortable meeting with me, given the <laughs> fact that we're in a pandemic? Because yeah. I still want to look at houses. <laughs> I got that a lot. You know, the <laughs> ironic thing, because if everybody, everybody's kind of dealing with COVID now and there's got vaccines, but when it hit, it felt like the world was going to end. No, there was no vaccines yet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. At that time, mm -hmm. like March 2020, like they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I remember in Georgia that month of April, they shut everything down. I remember going to the gas station at the time. It was like the walking dead, like the streets were empty mm -hmm. and people were really freaking out. So it was a scary time as a realtor around that time because I had my little Clorox rags yes. and I had my masks. And at that time, like they were just coming out with like what masks really work, what they don't, cloth ones, the surgical and, ones, all that kind of stuff. And mind you at that time, so I am still an executive yep, corporate, so I'm working from home like most other people, but he's still like, well, I gotta go show somebody yeah. a house. And so there was a huge internal conflict mm -hmm. within our household Absolutely. because I'm like, why are you showing people houses bring back COVID and at the time we didn't even know what it was. Oh, I don't right. think they even named it as COVID. It was just our Ariana was still um, Yeah and our so, daughter was still living um, here. Yep. I had so much resentment towards you. Because <laughs> look, you you have slid into our DMs now. <laughs> She's out down here without pre approval. Right, right out with a pre approval. But... And like my spouse is like excited to go show you houses mm -hmm. with a mask on mm -hmm. and I hadn't met you at this point. Yeah. So now but I had like, met her prior. We did one of those we had trips. already met yeah. so I kinda knew you know, she was, we had at that time started establishing more of a connection. She probably had my uh, cell phone at that time. So you I can was imagine introducing me the jealous spouse, yeah. right? <laughs> like, what is are it, you doing? Is this something this? I need to know right. between you and me and Kathleen? <laughs> Who is this Kathleen? But we ended up going to the community. Uh, it had to be somewhere at one of those trips that May, June time frame. Because... No, no, no. It was. So I, I landed. Yeah. You said you were comfortable meeting me with a mask. My yep. mom picked me up. We were all masked up. Yep. And you said, I'm going to show you this community. Um, so really like it, it yeah. was um, Chattahoochee Hills. Yeah. A, a little, you, you warned me, it's a little bit rural, a little yeah. remote. I'm a little bit different. I, I know that I come from New York, but I think that my transition from New York to New Jersey um, helped. Absolutely helped my transition from New Jersey, New York to, to Georgia. Because I had a difficult time. I, I had a, an entire year where it was a really hard transition for me. Mm -hmm. um, landed, we go straight to this to this community. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the house, the model home, which was the, the two story yeah. um, that I was obsessed with, I wasn't available <laughs> in the community. So we then drove to yes. a different community 30 Sonoya minutes away like that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. to see the model home. And I said, this is it. I was like, mom, what do I do? And so um, I also needed to figure out work, yes, right? Yes. So, uh, and I said, it, it's rural, but where's the supermarket? Right. So, so let me ask. Yep. So when you say you had to figure it out with work. Yeah. So at this point now, you have made the decision that <laughs> I'm relocating to Georgia. Had you not 
Talk confirm your, with your employer, yeah. like whether or not that was even going to work for you being able to stay employed? N not yet. No. Nope. Not oh. yet. Yeah. However, however, once you're dealing with a lender, I think it's really important mm -hmm. to, to put out there. A lender wants to ensure that you either have a job yeah. in yes. Georgia yep. or that your current employer is okay with you working 100% and you have to have a notarized letter from your employer. Yep. Did you know that you were going to be able to obtain that or were you just out here like, I hope it works out? I was walking in faith. You know why I walk in faith? Because everything that I had planned wasn't coming to fruition. Everything that I had planned about selling the condo wasn't working. And that day that I landed here in June of 2020, and the very next day, my mom went. My mom and I went back to the community, mm -hmm. and uh, we met with the on-site yeah. agent. She took us to where the supermarket was, and I signed the check over. Yeah. For and my didn't even know. money. I didn't even know if HR was gonna say no. You have to stay in. No. Nope. So um, this was on a weekend. I think I landed on a Friday. My mom and I went back to the community Saturday, Monday. I, I was a little bit of a chicken. I scheduled my call with my manager at 4 p.m. And I just was trying to work up the courage all day on how am I going to approach this? Mm -hmm. And so I met with my manager and he's like, okay, not what I expected our <laughs> conversation to be. But I said, he said, listen, Kathleen, you know, with, with the situation that it is, everyone's 100 percent remote. If it's ever going to happen, it's going to happen now. Had you asked me a year before, and the answer I know would have been no. He's like, I have to escalate it up. I work for a banking institution out of um, Canada, and so it had to go up to Canada. I did not, and then other other factors, yeah. right? Hey, cost of living. So I'm I work for New York City for uh, uh, an investment bank. Cost of living is cheaper in Atlanta. It, is my salary going to change? There was just so much. Um, all I know is that he said, look, I approve it. Uh, I'm going to get the right approvals. And so I had, uh, I had put my earnest money already. So I'm writing. And then, so the, le I start working with the lender and they asked me for this letter. And I said, I don't have the letter yet, <laughs> but I will get the letter. Um, and again, when, when, when I, I truly, truly walk in faith and when, when it, when it's his doors that he's opening, everything ends up working out December. Yeah. Um, because this is a, a build, right? This so build. I'm not closing, right? The, the initial closing date was March of 2021. Yeah. December, I get the letter from my job, allowing me to work 100% from Georgia, no change in my salary. And I mean, it was just It amazing. really did line up because we went under contract. Like she said, she came down in June. We went under contract June 28th mm -hmm. of 2020. There was not a tree knocked down. No. They didn't have... they. They were always during that time giving you estimates of when it'll be right. ready. But if everybody remembers out there, that COVID just absolutely blew those supply chain timelines mm -hmm. out the water. Like her house didn't, I don't think, get started until towards the end of the uh, 2020 year because right. um, here she had a whole basement. So they have to lay the foundation. She had a um, design center experience, which was really, really cool. And the biggest thing. She reconfigured her she, entire floor she plan. So. I want to get into that. <laughs> she reconfigured. So um, unheard of at the time. Um, all she kept saying to me is, Mark, I love to do laundry. It's important for me to have a big laundry room. Yeah. Even if I have to lose one of, this is a five bedroom floor plan. Yeah. So she went, because, but she had a basement that eventually you could put another bedroom down there. But her another bathroom. thought process was, okay, we're going to eliminate one of the bathrooms upstairs to make this really, really nice laundry room. Laundry room. Mm -hmm. I also work from home, so that's important for me. Um, of course, she fell in love with the two-story family room. Yes. The heart of the, the house is the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You fell in love with that and the lot. But... Talk a little bit about what that experience was like um, building a house, I would say semi-custom, right? Mm -hmm. You actually had an opportunity. We started back with five acres, I want a piece of land, build, and here you are with an opportunity to semi-build on a semi -custom. Acre, custom. Yeah, semi -custom custom. yeah. On, a, on an acre of land. Listen, I'm a visionary. I know I know what I wanted yeah. in, in my head, and I, I didn't know this at first, actually. The custom work started... Um, happening organically as we progressed, right? Because you kept saying, I want this upstairs instead of downstairs. That's when it started. Right, <laughs> right. And so if you want the laundry upstairs, what does that mean, right? Like, how am I? And so remember, I'm building a home from New York, New Jersey. Absolutely. And so I'm not getting to visit 
uh, every week to check up on the po progress. But I was. But, Checking yes, up. let right. me tell you, Amar, you were absolutely essential right. because you would always send me videos and updates. Yep. And, um, I mean, it just bar none. Like, no, there's no one like you out there. Oh, sure. um, like, besides Mark Evans. Like, <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> in, in your own way. Listen. You're hearing this story. She would not even be part of the family if it was just you. <laughs> no, but because that, that is your true. process. And, and I get it. Yeah, and I get it. But you know what? I, I, I'm highly favored. And and I love people. I love true connections. Uh, I, I feel like in I'm a good person. Yeah. And I want to attract good people. We connected. And, and we connected. And, yeah. and yeah. it was just, it was the way it was supposed to be. And we're genuinely friends today, today. right? So, Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Like, you guys are the community and the family that I'm building yes. um, here in, in Georgia. But listen, one of my trips to come check it on the house, um, the first trip was I got to actually see the first framing go up. That was so emotional. Guys, remember, I've never lived in a house before. Yes, yep. So even the design center was something foreign to me. I You're was picking overwhelmed. Out your stuff that you going to have Yeah, and house. I don't, yeah. look, I, I made mistakes through the process, and I made some ingenious things and Selection. ideas, right? Yep, yep. And one of those was moving the laundry room upstairs. There's four bedrooms upstairs. Why is the laundry room in the first floor? And so one of my visits was actually walking um, with the builder, right? Yes. And boom, there it was. I was, I, I had the vision, and they thought I was in insane eliminating a bathroom yep they did they didn't think they're like why would you for appraisal purposes value purposes we got to re plumb mm -hmm. the, the plumbing had to change yep and then you were obsessed too outside of the laundry room the pantry yes. you wanted a big pantry yes. which turned out amazing well yeah. she, she is she is laughing so she, they're kind <laughs> of cool <laughs> yeah, those two things were important to me. Like, this is the first time, I'm in my 40s, guys. This is the yeah. first time in my life yeah. that I'm going to have a laundry in my own home, yeah. that I don't have to pack it up and take it somewhere. Yeah. And then pantry, look, I, like I said, I went hungry when I was in college. It was a, it was a, a, a an experience that I, I lived through. And so for me, um, I'm, I'm Latina, I'm Puerto Rican. We love to feed people. We love to cook. Um, you guys have come to my house yeah. and my mom and I, she, she, the first time she heard that you guys were like vegan and stuff, she went and she <laughs> looked at recipes and she was determined to make you guys yep. a vegan lasagna. Yep. And so for me, the pantry represented me being able to feed myself, oh, yeah. my family, my friends, uh, for people to be, uh, feel welcomed in my home. It really came full circle because, you know, talking about how you grew up and sharing the space and... <laughs> you know, not having like a laundry facility and everything. And now this is a scenario. She's got nieces and nephews, she said, that is coming in. Big and, family. And, and she really loved that. Um, and we have pictures too. It was amazing, like put our masks on. Yes. When the foundation was poor. Yes. I did videos, you know, as the framing. So it's always an exciting, if you can afford it. Mm -hmm. and, and you did it. You have quite a story to, uh, to talk about. But so now we're going to, Again, I'm, flash like, I'm not using your word. I'm gonna flash. I'm, I'm, flash I'm not gonna word. use your word, but what I will, what I will say yep. to move us along mm -hmm. is, so now you know you're a super planner. Mm -hmm. So so far, everything has kind of gone to Kathleen's plan. Mm -hmm. God's plan. God's, God's plan. plan. I like that. Not it's mine. gone according to God's plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get the approval from work, you can do this, Kathleen. So now everything is just kind of smooth, smooth. sailing. Yep. And then all of a sudden it's not so smooth sailing anymore. Yeah. So share your story. Share your what happened. What yeah. happened during your process of being under construction yeah. with a now closed date? Closing date of May of, uh, we were thinking about May of 2021. Yeah, yeah. well, at this time it's still March, right? right, right. Um, so my house stood without windows. Windows was a huge industry. Yes. They got hit with COVID. <laughs> Supply so, chain for that, yep. yes. Yeah, so what, what ended up happening was I'm moving to a different city. So I wanted to visit all of my doctors um, get get to see them one last time um, because I knew it was going to take me time to find um, doctors New here. New primary right? care, right? New all primary that stuff. care and all that. So I end of 2020, uh, I visit my my doctors. I'm I'm at this point 41, and my doctor said, "Hey, have you gotten your mammogram?" And I he's like, "I sent you last year," and I said, "No, nope, didn't go, doc." Right. Yeah. So and I was like, listen, I'm not going to see you anymore. I'm moving. So, you know, it's an annual thing that I saw her yeah. and she's like, well, go get your mammal. And I said, no problem. So I go get my mammal for the first time. And actually this process, it was a little scary and I had to get a biopsy. 
and they were like, okay, it, you know, it's not cancer, but we want you to come back in three months mm. because uh, it just doesn't look right, but we want to monitor you. And I said, well, in three months, March, um, I won't be living here, but I'll follow up wherever I'm at. So March comes. Now at this point, I know the closing has been moved to May. Yep. So they actually called me. They forgot that I said that I wouldn't be around. Mm. So they called me and they say, hey, we're, we're want to schedule your follow up. And I said, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm still around. So let's schedule this follow up. Yep. And um, again, they saw something. Now this time I needed two biopsies, same breast. And the first time, you know, you wait about five days on your biopsy, prayed about it, and everything was fine, right? So this time, same thing. I'm literally, I'm like, it's just a, a process. Everything is going to be fine. And I get the call on a Friday afternoon. It was actually my best friend's birthday. Mm. And um, they said, I'm sorry to tell you. And they, and they did it over the phone because it's really? COVID. Wow, it's yeah. COVID. Oh, it was, I forgot about that. Yeah. And so they said, um, you have breast cancer. So wait. They call you over the phone, mm -hmm. so you don't even have an opportunity to like even prepare for what's about to come, and it's just, no. hey, sorry to let you know. This you is have good. breast cancer. Yeah, so apparently I, have a, I had, at the time, a very aggressive breast cancer, but it was, the, when three months earlier, it was actually the breast cancer was forming, but it wasn't cancer yet. Which is why they told you it's something, but it's nothing. But it was so aggressive that three months later, it was cancer. Mm. And um, it was stage one, it was early. So getting caught, getting the cancer caught early was, was a game changer. Um, but here I am, a, a healthy individual on a Friday, uh, on her way to, you know. Party. <laughs> no, 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 not party, it's COVID, remember? Oh, I'm forgetting, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I'm building a house and like all of these things are Wonderful going things great. I'm right highly here. favored and now I'm diagnosed with breast cancer. And my aunt passed away of breast cancer, ironically enough, at my same age, oh. in her early 40s. Oh, wow. um, and so, yeah, I mean, my life turned upside down to say the least. At this point, yeah. I, I wanna say this because this is really important. I have my mom's house that I'm paying mortgage. I have my condo that I'm paying mortgage. Yeah. At that point, I rented it, okay? So I decided to keep the condo as an investment property. Okay. So I have two tenants in my, in my condo. I'm renting an apartment month to month because I'm going to move so shortly. This home is ready. Right? And then I'm closing on a house. So I have a lot of moving pieces and a lot of things going on. And suddenly now I'm sick. The thing is, is that I looked at myself in the mirror and I wasn't sick. I was a healthy individual. Uh, cancer treatments made me sick, right? I had two surgeries. The cancer had spread, so I needed a second surgery. Um, and so before that, I said, I'm not going to be available to close on my own house in May. Right. I, I was looking for a power of attorney. And so I reached out to you guys yep. and really like it was a, a community thing. Like you guys, my realtors, now friends, the on-site agent, my lender, we all, and the builder, builder. Yep. all came together. And my house was not complete, completed when I closed, but the goal was to allow me to close. So I flew in. Closed on a Friday. I stood in an empty house, flew back Sunday, and then that following Friday was my first surgery um, to, to remove the cancer out of my breasts. And it was amazing because her whole family came up mm -hmm. like brothers, mother, mom, auntie, aunties, and sister in laws, right? All and that. You we guys. Were there. And we were there, and they put a big bow on mm -hmm. her front door. Mm -hmm. um, I remember getting like updates every every week, every day, really, as we were approaching closing from the on-site agents, the builder, their groups, they're, they're really good people. They were prayer warriors for, yes. her, yeah. for her. And um, obviously telling you what happened, like, you know, you know you're responsible. Oh my God, because that had never happened in our real estate career. We've had other things fall through and it wasn't even about like, oh my God, is she going to close? It was more no. like, oh my God, now I'm a, I'm really connected to Kathleen and her mother, her family is coming up for, the, you know, this, and it was really, really emotional. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, experience. during that time, because I don't know if I ever have shared it with you. So as you guys talked about, you guys that formed the connection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really a part of that. Right. You know, nice. You're still in corporate honest. America and all that. Yep. I still have my corporate job where that was where my primary focus was. So I was just aware of what was going on, on in real estate, but mm -hmm. he was kind of still the one that was having the connection with right. people. And so 
um, I still remember how affected he was mm -hmm. when, like, I guess we all learned about the cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I just, I knew you f as Katniss, mm -hmm. right? Now, people are going to slide into your right. DM now yeah. on Instagram, right? Yeah. I know a lot of people from Instagram, right. just from the DMs and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so now you had gone from being Katniss to Kathleen. Yeah, you? And I'm like, hold on. So this chick's been sliding your DMs and she's just been, a, a, now she has a name now, but he was, he was affected by mm -hmm. it. He was like, wow, this is so crazy. Yeah. Like, and so when I, like most people with their spouse, with their effect about it, it affected me. Right. And I remember that. That's like, we, you have to meet her. Yeah. He kept saying, you have to meet her. You have to meet her. Ironically, we were out shopping, I think in Hiram or something. Mm -hmm. um, and you called him. Mm -hmm. And I think it was something you were like, Kurt, can't wait to meet you. But that was actually our first time really having Talking. any type yeah. of yes. interaction. It Correct. wasn't even on Instagram. It was like you calling mm -hmm. him. I was in the car. But I had heard so much about you at that mm -hmm. point yeah. that I felt like I knew you yeah. just because he was, I mean, it affected our household. And it wasn't even about the deal yeah. because mm -hmm. we already knew that from that perspective, the builder was supportive. The lender was supportive. So it wasn't even about like, oh my God, is she going to close or not? Mm -hmm. It was like, you guys had really become close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he felt like, oh my God, like, I cannot believe this is happening to this girl. Mm -hmm. And I think just foreshadowing, you would already like in your mind, like, she was your friend. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. She was actually what we, what he would call you is like, she's going to be one of my golden girls. Yeah. yeah. And so there was something very early on that you guys were able to um, connect on. Mm -hmm. And that was brought in later and it doesn't matter now because here we are. Mm -hmm. right? um, but just to let you know, if you didn't know when yeah. all that was happening with you, it definitely affected our household because mm -hmm. he would kind of come in and she's like, wow, like I cannot believe this is happening. She's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh. Like, and through all of that, it was never really about like, is she going to close or not? It was almost like, like, what's the next step in her journey yeah. with the cancer? Like almost yeah. like the house became like secondary yeah. for us. And it became more like, so is she doing chemo? Not now? for me. I was like, I'm cancer or not? I'm closing this house. Yeah, she was, she was telling everybody. She was like, this is not going to stop me. I'm close. We're going to close and then I'll take care of the surgery. Yeah. But if you think about the story all along the way, you know, I don't think that you know, circumstances, you know, there's luck. There's all, always a little luck in life, but everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's part of God's plan. And like you said a little while ago, it is God's plan because this is going on from 2018. Yeah. She's going through all this. She has this kind of background. We have the first condo she has, the, the recession, right? And recession. Then recession. Yeah. Now you're buying and building your second house. COVID hits, <laughs> and then two months before closing, closing I get cancer. Yeah, it was a cancer your, diagnosis. But it was your resilience yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable that story. has us all sitting here now and has you sitting in the house that mm -hmm. you said, this is the one. Yep. Because there's a lot of people that would have taken a diagnosis as, oh, maybe this is a sign that yes. like, this is not what I should be doing. And now this is God telling me, yeah. focus on, you know, people come up with their reasons for a lot of things. Yeah. Right? And I think that it was really just your own resil mm -hmm. resilience and just faith, you, faith, faith, faith and you just believing yeah. like, no, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. that you never allow the cancer diagnosis to yeah. like be the real setback. Mm -hmm. It was more of a like, okay, it's the inconvenience. How do we kind of pivot a little bit? Right. But you never at all said, Hey guys, I'm not gonna be able to do this because I need to focus on this. Mm -hmm. You were very much like, Mark, I need a video. We're focusing on it. <laughs> yeah, so actually that's a great point. I think when I knew that you guys were gonna be family to me, because at this point we're friends, yeah. I'm getting to know yeah. you. Um, after my second surgery, I think uh, there was a, a certain thing, like I had highs and lows, right? I, I was really strong and then sometimes it would just get me and I was having a really difficult moment. And here I, I closed my house in May that I can't live in. My house is sitting on its own, empty, yep. right? And um, something comes over me and I'm like, I text Mark, I think, and I said, Mark, can you, can you do a video of my house? Um, and immediately, without a doubt, he said, absolutely. Yep. And you guys recorded my house. And it's so funny because at one point in the video, Kurt says, because Mark says, hey, guys, or hey, cat," And then you say, he's recording like he hasn't recorded this house eight <laughs> times before. I and did I, it every step of the way. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? 
anybody like I could have had my sister come and record the house yeah. but having the two of you in my house oh. that video meant so much to me because the two of you had to be in this video for for it to be as meaningful as it was you still watch it to this day I still watch it to this day I know exactly what you said I know yeah. the tour how you gave the tour <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and I knew that you guys were going to be family at that moment and I mean as I get a little teary eyed myself for me uh, I remember when we went to your house when it was official that you could move in, right? Um, and you had your family there and they had the ribbon, like you said. Um, for me, that was like the moment where I felt connected to you yeah. because it was after the deal, we're done. Mm -hmm. So everybody, you know, where they are supposed to be. But a lot of people don't really extend their family to us mm -hmm. and so you had us there and it was your mom it was your brother i think mm -hmm. his wife like mm -hmm. kid, like yeah. yeah so we felt like we were like a part of the family we like were. legitimately yeah. and i remember like when we were driving back saying like wow like i finally feel like i connected with cat oh. because up until really that moment yeah a lot of it was like i was kind of like in the background yeah. but it was really that was the connection right right um living vicariously through me. living vicariously yeah. through you know you and your golden <laughs> girl um and so i think that um you know just when we talk about real estate and we talk about making connections and things like that mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen right. with every transaction mm -hmm. But there are people every so often that come, you know, into our lives, and I think it is for a reason. I think it is for us to be able to say, "Wow, since 2017 or 18, when you guys first like, look at us now. Like, we've been to your home several times. You cook for us off the chain. You might add, yes, you made us go keto for the yeah. holiday. Yeah. So, like, no, I, I mean, I, I think that from our perspective as owners, this is what makes the job worthwhile, is that when mm -hmm. you, you can't connect with everybody, but when you can look back and there are people that you have genuine relationships with, yep. it, it's a lot, so. It was magical. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm uh, two and a half years cancer free. Um, you know, I have to take medication for five years, yeah. so I have to get checkups, you know, every three to six months because uh, I'm still in the high risk. Yeah. So the first five years is, is a high risk time. So, you know, I'm still, you know, in, it, it's nerve wracking, right? I don't, I don't live like I ever had cancer. I, I live to the fullest, um, but it definitely gets nerve wracking right before, um, all, the test time, Absolutely. you know, putting the robe on and going to the machine. Um, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. So to step back just a tiny bit. So I actually pre prematurely moved to Georgia. I wanted to be in my house so bad. Yeah, I that. So I actually looked up doctors here. And so I ended up, I ended my treatment in Georgia. So I started okay. in, in New York, yeah. New Jersey. And so I found out uh, the cancer center of America uh, in Newton. Newton yep. So, um, I finished six weeks of radiation there. Um, my house is empty. Right. Yeah, I didn't, I, d I only had one bed that I brought from New, from New, New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really have living room furniture. Um, so, you know, it was, it, it, it wasn't glitz and glams. Like even moving into my home, I was happy to be inside my home. I was going to ask you, so were you able to enjoy it? Because now, you know, it was a goal that you wanted your own house, mm -hmm. you know, the condo apartment rentals, et cetera. So now you get the house. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a special lot. It's a special yeah. view. I remember you telling me you just almost look out and you feel God yep. on your lot. All so talk, talk about what, you know, having made that move during that period. Well, not for anything. Well, you just completely took away my question <laughs> that I had. And my question to you, yes. you know, seriously, yeah. it really was you went through a lot, mm -hmm. especially towards the end of, you know, your process. Yep. And so... Like you said, you moved into the home mm -hmm. prematurely. You were still like undergoing treatment yep. like regularly mm -hmm. unless you're in your house. So how did you feel besides sick, mm -hmm. right? But were you mentally able to really enjoy the moment or were you too sort of distracted by just the bigger health scare to really appreciate what the goal that you had accomplished? Um, for me, I knew that God had my health. I wasn't worried about my health. It was just going through the treatment process. What got scary for me was my finances, right? Mm -hmm. So um, have the Alabama house, the condo now I lose one tenant. Mm, wow. Okay, so now I have to pay for half the mortgage until I find another tenant, yeah. right? 
Um, I closed on this beautiful home, but that mortgage started already, right? Okay, because yeah. I, I didn't move in until about two, two and a half months after I closed. Yeah. Um, so now I'm paying mortgage. And um, I didn't have long-term disability at work. So now I'm getting 60% of my salary. Wow. The amount of pressure that I was financially. And so needless to say, Kathleen did not buy anything. Um, I, I just really couldn't do much. I bought a refrigerator, right? Because yeah. it's a necessity. Yeah. Right. Um, but I didn't really purchase anything because I was just financially, I, I, was, I was fine in the sense that everything is getting paid. But the amount of stress, I, I, I look back and I don't know how I did it. To be able did to it. did it how? I know how you did it. You did it from the parents that raised you, mm -hmm. from the single mother that made it happen, no matter if she knew how she was going to make it happen or not, her effort was, mm -hmm. you know, I need to make this happen. Survive. And so I think from hearing your story, I know how you did it. You did it because failure was not the option. Mm -hmm. You knew what the goal was and you had to just figure out with everything that you were being hit with, mm -hmm. that's still the goal. That's still what I want. I still have to achieve that. Yep. And so, yeah, I think a lot of it was just your upbringing. I think yep. you, you kept that poor man's mentality mm -hmm. where a lot of us will come into our first million dollars, right? Hypothetically speaking, and we forget what it was like before we had that million dollars. Mm -hmm. So we spend according to like, I got a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I think that what I learned from you, you know, throughout the years, but I think especially today is that no matter how much your financial picture changed for the better or not, you sort of knew where you always wanted to be and that was below your means. And so I think <laughs> yeah. that puts you in the position when you really had to be kind of like living this way. Yeah. It probably wasn't that much of an adjustment because mm -hmm. you already were living that way anyway. Right, so right. I think mm -hmm. for me, just observing your story and mm -hmm. listening to it, I would say I know you survived because of the upbringing that you had. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish that for a lot of people that follow us that are you know in your situation or similar, mm -hmm. um, I wish a lot of us would learn that just because we earn five dollars more doesn't mean that we yep. have spend to spend the $5, the $5 more that we yeah. just earned. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people would end up in better situations mm -hmm. when the catastrophe happens, mm -hmm. because if you never keep changing your lifestyle as money keeps flowing and you just stay right here, yep. the money that you're not spending is going to be there waiting for you Absolutely. when you really need it. So. And, I, and I need it. I mean, that was a point in time where m m my being the way I was helped me. But again, like I said, I, I really feel like I, I'm always covered. And for some, somehow, like I, I finished radiation and I actually had to go right back to work because I, I ran out of disability time, right? Mm -hmm. So I never got time to, to actually recoup. Yeah. And so um, my job did amazing things for me. Like all the money that I had lost, I eventually in 2022, I sold the condo. So I decided that invest, uh, the investment property uh, wasn't right for me, especially being an owner from a distance. Right. So I, I was blessed to finally, I think that was like the third try yes. and yeah. I finally sold the condo and then I got a promotion at work mm. and then my salary grew and then I got my first like real corporate America executive bonus mm. and all of the stress that I had mm. was then all of a sudden I was able to start doing projects at home. Yeah. Yes. And let's talk about some of those projects because yes. they were amazing. Because like, again, you got to remember from my perspective, this whole floor plan changed. So I'm like, <laughs> what is she going to do? She's been talking about, oh, I want to work from home. I want to see that home office. I want to see that washroom we talked about. Yes. So tell the audience, you know, projects that you did for the house and yeah. how they came out. Absolutely. You know. So the first thing that I wanted to do was because I'm working 100% remote was work on my office. Yeah. Um, I needed a space to work. I've always been in that setting, that office setting, and I wanted to replicate that in my own home. So office was a priority for me. And then it became overwhelming. Like I want to do this. I want to do that. You have a laundry list of things that you want to do. And so I had to step back and focus on what do I use on a daily basis and what's going to allow me to make my life better on a day to day basis. And so I do laundry every day. I enjoy doing laundry now that I have a laundry room. So 
you know, after the office, I did the laundry room and I also did my closet because I went from sharing a closet with five other people to having my own closet. Mm. It's half empty. Like mm. I'm only utilizing half of my closet. Right. Um, again, I always remain real humble. Yeah. And so, you know, I can grow into it. Yeah, um, and then there's a, a combination of paying people to uh, complete a project for me. Yeah. And then for instance, my guest bathroom, I put up the wallpaper, mm. I put up all of the hooks, I put up all of the, like the shelves and it was an incredible sense of accomplishment to to work on a project myself. Wow. So I tried to, um, you inspired me because yes. we've been to your home. Um, <laughs> and you did a great job. And you Thank did a great you. job on all of the, the projects. And so the bathroom, I love the wallpaper, I love the shelving. And so you inspired me to go, oh, I can do that on my own. Yes. So we, we bought the shelves, <laughs> right? Uh, I think they're now in the basement. They've never even made it to <laughs> for the, the last eight months. For the last eight months, and, and that I, towel rack is still loose. And the towel rack is still loose. <laughs> so I think that so DIY is not it's not thing. for me. And it's um, okay. But I love the fact that you made it for you. Yeah. But also, I mean, your home is beautiful, right? Thank and you. so I think what I learned from you is that certain things don't require you to have to pay somebody to do it. Right. Yeah. And I think some things do. And, and, some things and I think when it comes to home ownership for a lot of people, like that can kind of be a big difference. And honestly, like how much house absolutely you can actually afford. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about the affordability factor on, if you buy this big house and you're not a DIY type absolutely. of a person, mm -hmm. you have to start the forecast cost around, well, I'm going to want to paint this room. I'm yeah. going to want to wallpaper this. You, if you know that you're the person that's not handy, like clearly I'm not, yeah. you kind of have to bake those costs into yeah. like your home ownership. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think yes. that in a lot of ways, you've been able to offset traditional home ownership costs by the things that you're like, you know what? YouTube is my friend. Absolutely, <laughs> and let YouTube me University. Out, so. But look, there's things like um, grass. I have grass for the first time in my life, right? And I and I have a, a little over an acre property, right? So I have actually someone obviously come cut my grass because my time is valuable. I in my in, initially I thought I was going to get a lawnmower and yeah, do it right. myself. Um, but it, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. It nope. is not easy to maintain a brand or or resale yep. home, right? My HVAC. Uh, went out already. Yes, my ice maker stopped working, and so for me, it's a challenge. I I want to be able to at least try. I want to learn. Um, the first time I got gas delivery, I went out there and I asked the guy to show me where do you um where do you put the gas? Where's the meter? If so, in case of emergency, where do I shut it off? Right. I actually did Home Depot courses online <laughs> to cat. show me uh, electrical. Right. Like there's just there's certain things that I want to know myself. I don't want to rely on if I'm having an overflow of water that I'll I want to know where off. to shut yeah. the main yeah. water valve yeah. off. And for somebody that this is their first home and I was raised in an apartment, there was a lot to learn. Wow, I'm still learning um, when something breaks. I want to at least attempt to learn it yeah. so that I can fix it myself if I can. And that yard is huge. So did you ever yes. do the irrigation or? I did the, you, irrigation. You did the irrigation. Oh, I, yeah. Months later, I moved into the house. I did the whole manual ir irrigation while sick, mind you. And I said, there's no way. That was like the first project, irrigation. In. <laughs> irrigation. I mean, here's this beautiful lady that we've gotten to know. And she was grew up, like you said, sharing rooms in an apartment. Now you have this one acre lot, mm -hmm. brand new, beautiful, I mean, she's got um, the septic tank, right? You yep. have the septic, you had a separate propane yes. right? tank installed yep. and electric. So this is a lot. How, talk to the audience about what your experience has been since you've owned the home and in a sense of um, any regrets on the size of it mm -hmm. or anything you would have done differently throughout that process. Yeah, look, I... You know, even when I bought the condo, everybody's like, you don't need two bed, two baths. But I always, I'm, I'm a forward thinker. Yeah. Um, no, I don't essentially need right. five bedrooms, you know, four bathrooms, which I turned into a three bathroom. But I have a huge family yeah. and nothing brings me more joy than you. to have them come and have space for them to feel at home. My, ho my house is 
peaceful. And as far as projects and maintaining it, right? So at first it was overwhelming, even cleaning a house yes, that big. Yeah. And so uh, I looked at it like, okay, I'm on the first floor Monday through Friday because I work mm -hmm. God knows how many hours. Yep. So I clean my first floor bathroom uh, on every Friday, right? Um, upstairs, I'm on the, uh, on the weekends, I'm upstairs more. So I clean upstairs. I'll, I'll vacuum my bedroom. I'll clean the. So there's there's a process. You can't tackle Do it all at once. All at once, yeah. right? And so I, I have a process now. Uh, in the beginning, it was super overwhelming. Yes, yeah, sometimes things can get overwhelming now, right. um, especially when something breaks down. But overall, look, a big house is not for everybody. Um, I know that you guys warned me, uh, <laughs> but I, I think I've been rocking out. You have. I've been rocking out. You have done an amazing job with your interior design. You've done, you. you know, that's my big thing because I, yeah. I do my tours. I'm like, oh, this will look good here. And she nailed it for absolutely everything. Well, as we sort of wind down mm -hmm. the conversation, yep. and again, obviously, thank you so much yes. for, for being a guest. Um, you know, Mark and I were social media heavy. We're always, whether it's real or just other content, um, you know, I feel like in this industry of real estate, you know, there's a lot of realtors, good ones, bad ones, some that are in the middle mm -hmm. and, and all that. Um, the hardest thing is trying to always be authentic mm -hmm. and transparent with our audience so that they do feel that sense of comfort and trust and, and all of what comes. So let me ask you, cause you know, us on a different level mm -hmm. now. Um, People have a perception of who they think Mark and Kurt are. They have an idea of what they think Great Homes ATL as a brand, as a company, what what that looks like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know us personally. You know Mark Kurt, you know Hope, the first lady. You haven't met our, our latest um, agent. I did. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, you oh, yeah, did. Yeah, 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 you did. Holiday party. Yeah. So what would you say, um, just to share it today, like what's been something that you can say from your observation, like, based on what we how we present publicly social media otherwise what would you say i don't know if the public really knows this about mark and kurt and or great homes atl you know i i'm gonna flip it on you i think that you're not allowed to do that on my show. <laughs> <laughs> no i i think that Mostly Mark, right? Because at the time you, you weren't on social media as right. much as you are now. You, you make me laugh, but I understand your humor, whereas other people wouldn't. But I feel like you guys are authentically you in front of the camera and you guys are you behind the camera. Yep. And the consistency, I don't need to guess what version of you I'm getting. I'm getting you guys. And I love authenticity. I'm always authentic. And I always feel like I, I'm a piece of the two of you, right? You have like that New York, you're straight to the point. I have that side of me. Yeah. I'm also laid back. Um, you know, kind of casual. Mark has that yeah. side of him. Mm -hmm. Although I see Mark, you know, stepping up yeah. his, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you stepped me up, right? Well, you know, you with me just by yeah. affiliation. Yes, you know. yes, yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, and, and I love that, like, when you met my family and the way my, like I tell my mom, oh, I'm going to go to the boys. Oh, let, she knows exactly who I'm talking about. Um, she's like, oh, I bumped into a recipe for them. And like, you guys are, I know that not everybody belongs as a family member, but I just feel so blessed mm. and it was intentional that we are, you guys are truly my family. Mm. Absolutely. Um, and Hands down. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, like I said, it means a lot to us because yes. we are very successful in what we do. Um, I take everything personally mm -hmm. and he's, he's coming around. Um, but I think these type of relationships that have formed has brought us a, a amount of joy that even we didn't imagine getting into, you know, no. this business and starting Great Homes ATL. No, not at all. And I, it, it's always good to just hear again from another person, from another person's perspective, mm -hmm. what their perception is of us, because look, let's face it. I'm usually the one that's in the hot seat between the two of us yeah. because some people don't get my humor or right. they don't get my, I won't even Directness. call it humor. They don't get my directness. Yes. And I think that a lot of that comes from, again, the position that, the positions that I've been in. Mm -hmm. I'm used to being like an executive. So yep. it's like, I don't have time to sugarcoat. That takes yeah. too long. Yeah. This has to get done. I'm just going to say it one time the way it needs to get done. Mm -hmm. Let's get it done. 
Whereas Mark is the one that's more like I'm a people pleaser. He's a people yeah. pleaser by yeah. nature. Yeah. But I think that Mark, don't don't sell yourself short. I think that you are direct as yeah. well. Yes. Um, I don't think that I ever felt like that you were sugarcoating or or beating yeah. around the bush. You're like, right. look, this 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 is what you need to do, Kathleen or whatever. And so you guys have different styles yes. and balance each other out, which I'm pretty sure is why you guys have been uh, together, ha 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 happily yeah. married. Yep. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Thank you. Well. I think that was an amazing conversation. What about you really guys? Was. It was amazing. I'm uh, surprised and excited and happy that you decided to do it because, you. you know, we know yes. that you're, you're a private person five. and yes. you're very reserved. Yes. So the fact that you would open up, it means um, so much. To it us. does mean a lot to us. And I'm sure it's going to mean a lot to the people that are watching and listening yeah. because, you know, hey, you're from New York. We have so many relocation buyers mm -hmm. from New York. Um, we have people that are probably right now going to watch this sitting in New York like, oh, I can do that. I can do, do that. that. Yeah. And so I think that, again, the, the purpose of the podcast is to not just hear from our perspective, mm -hmm. but to really get the truth from our client's perspective, because, you know, we're the sales guys. Mm -hmm. So we're the one that's supposed to convince you to make the move. But it never probably felt convincing. I yeah, I never. I don't, like, I don't think we that's felt, that's what our strength is. I don't think that we, is your strength. We don't force but i know that from an audience but an audience watching, yeah right, that's right. Right. Know they're us. trying to yeah. get us to do that and so right. i think having somebody that actually has already done it mm -hmm. and you've been able to tell your story as to why you did yes. it and what the motivation behind it is i think it is really for somebody sitting at home or listening to wherever they're like oh my god i connect with that yeah. and so yeah. um for the opportunity that you've given us to give the audience thank you thank you thank you for the platform and allowing me to tell my truth and share my story which i i i'm very open and honest with my family and people that are close to me you you guys know my story but i, I thought it was important to share and to give people hope um whether you're somebody with an illness whether you're a single woman with children don't give up um, anything can happen when you set your mind to it, organize, study, educate yourself and surround yourself with amazing people and, and things will get done. Amazing. So basically I'm a translator. She said lock in with great <laughs> They know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. They funny. They're, they're family oriented. Yes. Well, we love you, Kathleen. Thank you. And I love you guys. Too. We wish you continued. Thank you. Healing. Yes. And you got to reach. All right. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Great Homes ATL. We've got a lot of great stuff in store for you. Now stay tuned for next week's episode. If you haven't already, make sure you set your notifications and subscribe to Behind the Front Door Podcast.